Hey everyone, I'm Tina Melson. This is Kelly Vincent. We are coming to you live from Scottsdale, Arizona. This is our Sunday night Team Go Extreme training. Super excited to have you all on with us. And, uh, you know, our topic for tonight is heroes are made on the battlefield. So when you think about a hero, somebody who does something important to either change someone's life or help them out in a significant way is what I think of when I think of hero. And I've never met a hero who was made by sitting at their desk and doing their normal daily work. Like that's not where heroes are made. Heroes are made in extraordinary circumstances. Usually those circumstances are unexpected and not the best of, right? That's when heroes are made. And I know for the last few months, we have had some issues with the company when it comes to things we expected to go one way and they took a turn and unexpectedly went a different direction. And we all went, what the heck? This is not what I expected 18 months into a company, but here's what happened. How many of you feel like you've been on the battlefields for the last few months? Well, some people couldn't take it and they left. They left the battlefield. And other people like sat in the barracks and just complained on the battlefield and others charged forward and did what they needed to do to change lives and improve the communities and the people around them, regardless of what was happening on this battlefield. And that's clearly you guys, right? And you guys are here with us tonight because you are warriors in the mud with us. Well, guess what? We're all going to be rewarded because things have taken a turn. All of the little issues that we've had are all being resolved, maybe not as quickly as we had wanted, but they're all being resolved. And the people left standing on the battlefield are the ones that are going to be the heroes and have the most benefit from everybody going forward. All right. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna quickly roll through this and just say, um, getting your permission to be completely upfront with you. Uh, some of the things I'm about to say, you, it might kind of gripe you or grind you the wrong way. And giving me permission to just speak freely to you means that you're just gonna stay on here um, and listen. So I may say, you know, things that maybe make you mad even, but I only say them to help people. Uh, you know, sometimes there's, there's sometimes it's appropriate to make people feel good and empowered and motivated. And I hope you get that out of this, but there's sometimes you just got to call out the truth. And, you know, by telling people the truth is letting people know, uh, you know, what they're doing that's not working. Um, if you study anything, uh, whether it's Elon Musk or Tony Robbins or Grant Cardone or you know, Gary V, whoever it is, you probably see a ball on memes anyway, on Instagram or uh, TikTok or whatever you're looking at, social media. And they always have these great memes, in my opinion. Um, the latest one being uh, Elon Musk, I, I, it's like really resonates with me. And he made this statement that said, you know, if you really want to make a dent in your future and achieving your goals, and making some big things happen in your life. Take what you planned on doing in the next five years and do it in five months. And I read that and went, and it, by the way, it could be wrong. You could have said six years, you know, or 10 years, whatever, but I just made it easy because I got five fingers, five years to do it in five months. And here's the thing about that. Uh, you know, some people look at that and think, well, that's impossible. Right. There's the, the impossible crowd that already made up their mind and said, no way, it's not going to happen. There's no possibility whatsoever. There's only one of me. There, I'll never do it. So instead of even trying, they just don't do anything. They just get stopped. So, you know, ask yourself tonight, you know, throughout this conversation where you get stopped. And when I say get stopped, you made up your mind already in any given conversation, circumstance, or situation that you're just not going to participate 
because you've made up a reason that is going to stop you from moving ahead. Now, we do this on a daily basis. Let's face it, you know, your, your New Year's resolution. All right, what's already stopped you from continuing on the path that you started January 1? Right, are you still on that diet? Are you still working out? Are you still doing the big things that you, you know, wanted to do this year? Or did you already get stopped? And so what happens, what Tina's talking about when you're on the battlefield, you know, uh, and if you're new to the team, um, first of all, welcome to the team. And uh, second of all, what you're going to get from Tina and myself is just straight up, uh, this is how it is. And in my honest opinion, what I've learned uh, through most of my life and 25 years owning a construction company is at the end of the day, people just want to know what they can count on, even if it's bad news, right? So then you can make your decisions and at least know where you stand. And to me, I would rather be respected, but people don't like what I have to say, but they respect the fact that I'm willing to say it uh, so that they know what they can count on from me or just what they can count on from the company, uh, count on period, so that they can move forward. And people, at the end of the day, that's all they want. And so we're going to deliver that all the time. And, you know, the last, what, couple months since December 1? I'd say since December 1, um, even myself, I've been in a little bit of turmoil, um, mostly because I'm very impatient. And I want things how I want them in the time that I want them done. And, you know, probably like most of you people, most of the people here, uh, you know, make goals or they want a team. They want to, this, this is what it looks like. They have this huge expectation. And when your goals don't meet the expectation of actually realizing the goals, then you start to wonder, hmm, you know, is there something wrong with me? Then, then, then the stories start piling up, right? And usually it's bad news, right? Then you start making up stories like, well, maybe I'm not good enough, or maybe this company's not the company, or maybe, you know, everybody else except for me is lucky, or maybe, you know, I live in the wrong area, you know, because people just don't respond to this kind of stuff in my area, my favorite one. I love that one. That's the best one. Um, and, you know, you're going to make up any reason why to not be accountable or not take accountability for your business. Because at the end of the day, this is your business. Um, of course, we're here to assist, help, and motivate uh, you know, anybody to realize and have all the success they want here. But when you get mired in the uh, vicious circle, right, that most of us have been in before, uh, some of us are still in it, right? We're, and it, let me explain to you about that circle. It's when you wake up and you press play and you just do the same thing you did yesterday, the week before, the month before, the decade before, and it just, and then you wonder why, man, how come my life's not different, you know? I'm doing these things every day, but it's still the same result, the same thing. It always happens. And it, it, it just seems like I'm never getting ahead. You know, like the definition of insanity, doing the same thing twice, expecting a different result. And it makes you wonder, right? What, why are people just keep doing this, right? Oh, I'm gonna make a goal. All right, today's gonna be the day Okay, here I go, here I go. Oh, we have a back order. Oh, forget it. You know, I'll just wait until all that's resolved. And then, and only then when that gets handled, then I'll be prepared to start over again. And to tell you the truth, uh, it, it br brings me back to my opening line. Any successful person that you study, I promise you, They've all been through adversity. They've been through the suck more than you can imagine. And here's what they did. They chose just differently. They're the same as you. They put their pants on one leg at a time, just like you do. 
But what they did is instead of get stopped, they innovated, right? They figured out a way to move forward in spite of all the challenges that are hitting them sideways. And, you know, let's face it, this business that we're all in um, has way less challenges, really, than a lot of businesses out there. And I'm going to give you an example. I'm just going to give you a little bit of history about my, my, how I got started in construction, right? Maybe you could put this together. So one day I just made a declaration, I'm going to be a contractor. And I went through this whole epiphany of how I was going to do this. And I, and once I declared that I was an instant breakdown. And because here's the breakdown, I didn't have a truck. I didn't have a contractor's license. I had no tools. I really didn't even have the know-how, except I was blessed with the ability to easily kind of figure things out and build things uh, pretty easily. And people even hired me down the street. Um, but once I made that commitment, what showed up was instant breakdown. And that breakdown, instead of causing me to say, oh, well, maybe I'm just too young, like everybody told me, you know, you, you look like you're 14 and you're going to do what? You know, how's this going to work? How are you going to do this? And I had all these people telling me, oh, well, you don't have the tools. So how can you do that? If you don't even have the tools, you don't have a proper truck. You don't even have a license. What are you going to do? How are you going to make that happen? You know, all these people, it seemed like they were hoping and wishing that I would fail. And instead, I just turned that into, oh, I can't wait to prove them wrong, right? I used that and turned that bad energy into motivation, which I hope all of you do. Uh, it, it's something that really could get you up in the morning at five in the morning. And even my own dad said I was going to be the biggest failure out of all my 10 brothers and sisters, and I'd never make it. Um, that, that got me up probably at four in the morning, five in the morning for like 10 years straight. I used that just to prove them wrong, right? But it worked. It was a winning formula. I used something bad and turned it into to motivation to make me win. Now, I'm starting with these breakdowns, right? Now, you can turn my breakdowns that I'm talking about into your breakdowns you're having right now, but you know, tools. Let me just go into tools real quick. I didn't have tools. So I'm like, how am I going to, I don't have thousands of dollars to go buy all these tools. So what I did is I went to pawn shops. I said, Hey, you got tools that are way overpriced. Nobody's going to buy them. Um, they're sitting here and, you know, doing nothing. You're outside of your shop needs painted. What else do you need done at your home? If you let me use these tools to actually do that, I'll take the tools and payment. Bing. I had tools. I had instant tools. In fact, I, actually, I still have some of those tools. I had tons of tools. Like They're like, really? That makes sense? Okay, so I bartered. I learned how to barter and bartered my way into a, a truck. I bartered my way into ladders and all everything I needed. So now I have the stuff to go do what my declaration was. That, you know, then I went and I'm bad at taking tests. Um, you know, I get horrified. You know, you get the answer, you know, yeah, A, B, C, or D. And I guess I put C enough times uh, to pass the contractor's license test. And, you know, so I had that. And I, was, I checked these things off that were like, people were telling me all the noise on the outside are saying, man, are you crazy? This is never going to happen. Like usually people go get a loan for $250,000 to get all this stuff. And you got to have this, you got a license, then you have to bond, and then you have all this stuff. And guys, I just kept checking it off, checking it off, checking it off, checking it off. And, and it, at times I thought, man, how am I going to overcome this? This seems nearly impossible, like, because I didn't have any backing. Nobody was helping me. I didn't even have somebody, like, guiding me, right? Remember, I told you my dad was hoping I was going to fail. And so, like, I didn't really have too many people to turn to, so I just figured it out. And then I coined the frame. I'm a good figure out -er -er -er. Uh, And that's what I got good at, is figuring stuff out. Now, let's just bring this back to right now. We've had all the hurdles, the jumps, the, like, wondering, oh, what's going to happen next? And I promise you, there's probably one of you on here right now that's going, oh, my gosh, this is starting to look like, oh, something in the past. You know, is that, oh, no, you know, 
oh boy, it looks a little, little wobbly, right? And what happens is we're making decisions like instantly in our minds of what's going to happen next based upon the past, based upon what it looks like instead of forging through, right? Now we're all guilty of that, you know, at least I am. All right, I admit it, I'm guilty of that. And, but I'm one of those people that when you, when adversity comes my way, uh, fight or flight kicks in, right? And I'm a fighter. So I'm gonna like take it on and figure it out. And, you know, somehow come to a conclusion that's gonna work, that'll make progress into being able to make progress and make it better or get over that hurdle. But, you know, this isn't going to be the last time we're going to have a hurdle. Uh, every company has that. I don't care how big the company is or how worldwide they are. Uh, it's, they're going to have them. It's just part of doing business. And so I applaud everybody that, like, was either didn't know any of this and just kept going and going and going. But, you know, I'll be the first to tell you, I was kind of upset when we when the products weren't being shipped, you know, like we had perfectly done for the first, you know, 14 months. Um, we had like literally the best shipping I've ever seen in any company ever. Then all of a sudden it's like, ah, you know, what's going on here? Um, you know, what needs to happen in order to have that again, right? And that's the question to ask yourself uh, when you're meeting adversity instead of going, oh boy, here we go again, or man, that looks like that, right? And be driven, because here's what's going to happen, right? When you start making decisions based upon something that looks or appears like the past, or it appears like your already always uh, way of being in terms of when something doesn't go the way you want it to, right? Where you're just going to go right back to push and play and like, here we go again. Okay, I'll just get on that hamster wheel again and just keep doing this. So instead of doing that, you got to fight through it. And fighting through it means you're going to be uncomfortable. And uncomfortable is the place to be, especially in this business. And, it, you know, I really encourage everyone here is to find somebody to study, uh, get some books, get some people that really have gotten what you really want to get to or have obtained that level of success that you want to get to and study up on them. I guarantee you, if they wrote up, they're going to talk about the adversity they face. Um, Elon Musk is my new favorite because I love how he talks about all the failures. Like it's part of it. Like literally, if you're not failing at something, uh, you're literally going to go nowhere because you're not learning. And, you know, and the, but there's a key ingredient that you have that comes with that, which is the decision making part, because you're going to decide in these moments who you're going to be in the matter of being accountable and taking ownership for your business. Are you going to run? Right. Are you going to face it head on and be part of figuring it out? Right. There's certain people here that people didn't have their products on their team. And because they took advantage of all the big promotions we've had, they had like a stockpile of products. They're like, well, shoot. Well, if my team can't, especially the new team members, right? We don't want, we don't want to show them what's going on. So they took their products and shipped them to them, right? And that happened. They like that worked. That was being innovative. That's figuring it out and making something you know, happen in the moment, a decision, uh, that's the way to, way to handle that situation. But there's going to always be something. You're going to always run into something who's an expert, right? Who's going to tell you, oh, this, this stuff doesn't, you know, oh, wow. You know, but this one ingredient, you know, I'm going to cancel out everything because there's like the plastic in the packaging is one mil too thick. And if it hits the sun in a direct you know, they're going to be like that, right? They're going to have these, you know, breakdowns of like the smallest little thing you've never even thought of before to come up for a reason to poke holes in what we have, which is so amazing. Um, and again, how are you going to be in that moment? Who are you going to be in that moment?
Are you gonna are you gonna get worried and like, wow, maybe I'll curl up and go crawl in a cave and and because I don't know how to answer this? Um, I hope not, but I promise you what you all have now, um, a lot of us didn't have when we first started, which is a total huge team of supporters that are willing to help anyone out here. And we're a team and we could lean on each other for certain things. And I know there's people on your team that, that possibly, all right, I'll just say possibly, that I call it, you, you know, the nice syndrome that you've been a little bit too nice to where you just let them get away with, you know, talking your ear off about they're gonna do this, they hope to do that. I think I got a big one on the hook, um, but then it just stops at that, right? Because at some point in time, it's not a business unless you make a what? A sale, right? We're, we're in the business of selling stuff, which is mostly, by the way, ourselves. That's, that's what we're selling is who we're, we're, we are and our belief and confidence in the company, ourselves, the products that we have. Um, so at some point in time, it is good to talk to people and challenge them to actually take action, right? Because that's what we're about. So in order to move, keep moving forward, right? Continual action has to be done, all right? So uh, a lot of people have asked me, well, how long is it going to take to get to where you're at? Oh, you know, that's a hard question to ask, to answer. Because I don't know, you know, how long it will take. It could take somebody a couple months, really, if they really wanted to go for it with the tools that we have in place now, it could be just like that. But really, how long it takes is how long you're willing to work on yourself and get rid of all the belief systems that you've had up until this moment, be willing to take coaching and be willing to uh, let go of being right about how things are going to work out. And you've all heard me say, you know, there's two kinds of people, right? You're either right or you're rich. And then when the people argue with me about there's more than two kinds or that's not right, and I just say, well, you're right. Um, and because to me, it can be black and white. Uh, you know, the, the gray area is where people are the, like the decisions not made. You know, I'm thinking about it. Well, let me, you know, I'll figure it out. I'll get back to you later, which is usually never. Um, you know, let me consider that for a minute. Uh, you know, I think I'm getting ready to get ready to get ready. And then I'll have a decision made. You know, you, we've all heard these things. Uh, and we've all probably done some of these things, but you got to know it's either it's it's a go or no go situation and go or no go, uh, you know, in the military is life and death. Right. If you're if it's do or die, you know, if you, there is no hold on a minute. Time out. I'm not feeling up to it today. Uh, can you give me a little day breather? and we'll continue trying to kill each other tomorrow. No, you can't do that. It, it's just not gonna happen. But what happens is people let themselves off the hook and so easily, instead of just taking accountability, and then you ask, well, how could I be accountable, Kelly, for you know problems that I'm not even accountable for? Now, that's a good question to ask me, right? Why am I accountable for you know, things not going perfectly? Because it's your business, that's why. Um, and being innovative would be taking charge. And I know there's people on here, like I said, ship their own products. There's people that made little postcards saying, hey, you know, by the way, this is like out of the norm, but I want to let you know what you could count on. If you got a card saying, hey, by the way, you know, the company's like figuring some stuff out, but I personally want to let you know what you can count on from me. And I'm going to personally promise you that you're going to get this and, you know, in a, as timely manner as possible, or I'm going to try to resolve whatever I can. 
And here's the thing, you might not have shipped them anything, but you just let somebody know what they can count on, right? So that's stuff that you guys could be in charge of and have been in charge of that I applaud for doing, but that's just what it takes, right? It, it's what it takes. Uh, there's certain people on here that like can literally uh, enroll me under the table online, right? They can just sit there and do it all day long and sit in one chair and not move even except for their fingers and their eyes are staring at their screen to doing that all day. They'll roll me under the table doing that because that's not my thing. So I don't pretend to be right about that. My way is the exact way that you should be doing things. Um, my way is just, I kind of just make it fun and spontaneous. And I don't even actually think at this point, I don't even think about it. It's kind of like I figure out a way just for fun to bring up a co like conversation about what we're doing in every conversation. And then I, and I test myself, like I'm testing myself and then I expect nothing. And then when I expect nothing, all of a sudden things show up. Um, but that's just how I do things. So it doesn't mean it's the right way. It's just one way of doing things, events, you know, B2B, uh, you know, heck, if you really want to call it going to Lowe's and Home Depot, I, if, if, you want to, if you want to really rate some of my success, it's been pretty successful just standing in line in the contractor line. And, but I don't expect Sherry Denny or Julia or Brenda to go out and do that, right? Um, it's, listen, because we're, we're all going to figure out our own way that's going to work best for us. There's tons of people that have... Have, and here's the key word, that have consistent success of doing what we do that I would listen to or encourage you to listen to. And that's, that's the marker. That's how, you, um, that, that's, that's how you have real knowledge of that it works because they consistently are able to do it over and over and over and over. I would say that that is a great system because it's continually working. And so I would look at all these different ways. But like I said in the beginning, at the end of the day, this is your business. And when you take ownership of your business, like you are carrying the flag with your name on it and your business that, that says, you know, X business and you're carrying that flag, it means that you're taking ownership for everything that encompasses that, including your team, including the company, like what they do, because we all have a voice, right? Without us, there is no company. It's this double-edged sword, really, because there's people that I've heard, well, how come the company can't do that? Well, how come the company can't put out commercials and then we just get the calls? Well, if they did that, then they wouldn't need us, right? They can do that. But then we wouldn't be here. There wouldn't be an opportunity for us. That's our job, right? We are the commercial. And so there is things that you can do moving forward. And I'm just going to tell you this. Don't spend a lot of time on the what happened yesterday. Because I, the good news is this. We, we, we were up like this, and then the roller coaster started going down like this. And guess what? Now the roller coaster is going up like this again. Um, and it's going to be these ups and downs. I promise you it's going to keep uh, happening, not on the level that, it, that we just went through and endured. Um, and what's great is some people have told me, what are you talking about? I love that. Uh, like, what are you, they're like, what are you talking about? Uh, you know, so that's great news that you don't know, but, you know, I have, um, I'm very tuned in to keeping the integrity about what's going on so people know what they could count on. And I promise you, I'm more excited now because of the eye-opening things that are happening and the momentum that is literally being invented 
And I'm not saying starting, like it's being invented. Like, cause, cause people are taking measures and going out there and blasting this. And whether it's on this team or just company wide, like people are joining like in droves. And that's great for you and me. Uh, and here's why, because the name is getting out there. It's being repeated. And for all the people who don't follow up, who had somebody introduce it to them from a different state and they told their friend and told this other friend, and then you brought it up and they've already seen this, but never got followed up. And now you signed them up. That's going to happen more often than not because of the non-follow-up that people do. So I would, I suggest that if there's anything that, you know, you're, you're like still bothered by, or have endured that you need to get off your chest and talk about, I would do that immediately. Because right now to me, I, we could kind of go like this, close that chapter, close that door because the new one just got open. The new one with, with the white papers, I don't know about you, but it's, it's kind of pretty exciting when somebody says, well, how do I know that your product's even real? Hello. Here's how you know, because it says it. It says it, like, and it's approved. And, and there's certain things we could say now that we couldn't even have said before. And it has agreement with medical professionals that it is what we say it is. That's pretty amazing. That's not, that's actually pretty rare in our industry. Usually it's just a bunch of stories and a bunch of agreement and testimonials. And now we actually got the proof and the pudding um, to talk to people about and which really gives a lot of validity to what we have to offer people. So I just want to end with the story from last night. Okay. So we, um, we um you know we love stories right and and i want to ask you a question so last night we had guests over and we were told by one of the guests that the main guest that's visiting from out of town had a mary Kay business 20 something years ago <laughs> and never sold one piece of makeup ever and so now her entire family, who she brought with her to our house last night, is so against network marketing because they think it's the biggest scam ever. So this is what we are told 10 minutes, 15 minutes before they arrive. So I'm thinking, well, it's not like that has to come up. We don't, we're not going to bring, it doesn't have to come up, right? It's okay. However, how many of you would have decided right then and there, I'm not saying a word about it, let it go, it's no big deal. Okay, we're not those people. So a couple hours into the night, you could see she was uncomfortable, just uncomfortable. And she is actually her very first flight she'd ever been on. So yeah, uh, yeah. So she uh, had back problems and some health issues already and then got on an airplane and it exasperated it right so she was uncomfortable so i grabbed a box of slide and stp i said you know what you look a little uncomfortable are you in pain and she said yeah you know i'm in a little bit of pain i said here pop this in your mouth it's all plant-based it's natural it's not going to mess with anything you're already taking popped them in her hand to the slide and the stp she put it under her i said just stick it under your tongue you won't even realize it's there Okay, and that's all that was said. About half an hour later, 45 minutes later, they left. And then I got a text, how do I get more? <laughs> how many of you would have been so scared that the topic that her family thinks is the devil came up in conversation that you wouldn't have even brought it up, given her a sample, wouldn't have even broached the topic? not on the battlefield, but you know what? I live on the battlefield. That's how we started this conversation. Are you running away from the battlefield because there's issues? 
would you have expected us to run away from the battlefield because we knew someone else on the battlefield would look at us funny or think we're horrible people or we're scam artists? Would you just have not mentioned it at all? And that's what's happening with some of the shipping issues. People are like, well, I'll just wait till everything's back in the stock. Our products are so fabulous. They're going so fast. We may never have all 15 products in stock at all times, all the time, 100% of the time. I'll tell you this, we have 8,000 boxes of GRW coming. Do you know how many are on our list of back orders? Over 5,000, which means there's only gonna be 3,000 left. So yes, they did place another order. But what I'm saying is you can't let these little landmines keep you from being on the battlefield, right? You'll never be a hero if you're not in the fight. And in our business, the hero is you changing and helping people's lives while changing and helping your own life at the same time. And what that looks like might not be a medal of honor. That might be a big fat paycheck. That's what the hero's medal might look like in our case. And the more you're on the battlefield fighting, the bigger the paycheck is going to be. And if you're not fighting, if you're going to wait, I don't want to step on the landmines. I don't want to trip up the wire. I don't want to get dirty. I'll just wait. I'll just complain to everybody about how it's not working perfectly yet. If you're going to do that, your paycheck's going to be very small. And if you're fine with that, we're fine with that. But if you want a big fat paycheck and you want to be on the battlefield fighting with us every day, we'd like that even better. So to us, you guys are our heroes. You're all here on a Sunday night. You could be doing anything else. You all show up on our Tuesday night meetings week after week after week. You could be doing anything else, but you're here. So you're our heroes. You're Sergi's hero. He knows who's in the battle fighting and who's sitting on the sideline complaining and asking and waiting and asking for help or whatever on the sidelines. He knows, he sees everything. We did a webinar for a team out of Bulgaria. And then he sent us a thank you for it. And I was like, he wasn't even on the webinar. How did he even know that we did that? How, he doesn't know. He knows everything. He sees everything. He knows you all by name. He knows every corporate director's name. He asks about you guys to us. So just know your efforts are not going unnoticed, even though it might feel like a battlefield and we're all banged up and bruised. Don't think that's not being recognized and noticed from behind the scenes, because it is. So that's our training for tonight. We're gonna um, unmute everybody and answer some questions.